A new bar in Dublin is making news for what feature that you will love? Head polisher. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I haven't heard of. Uh, you could uh, almost actually, <laughs> in a very weird way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you, right, if you think of head polisher in a dirty way. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. Whatever could you mean? Um, they right. spent well, three million know. euros on it. There's what? There's three million euros they spent on this new bar. Okay. <laughs> Not too bad. Um, um, it's in Swords, and there is a little bit of a clue in that. I mean, that's a, that's the kind of place I don't go to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Uh, is that a dodgy area? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, think, <laughs> I think it used to be, but then they kind of gentrified it, and now it's fancy. Um, this, yeah, this reeks of a place that is gentrified and made by someone who's tried to make it fancy and come up with what is the stupidest thing we can do with our toilets <laughs> um <laughs> let me see is it a oh i, I don't know I mean, i've got like completely horrible thoughts in my mind right now so i'm just gonna say it's a um a ball cleaner in the bathroom <sighs> I, I guess you could almost <laughs> the, the, the lightest way I could have gone with that. <laughs> the newly opened K67 Bar and Grill in Swords, Dublin, believes pub goers will embrace what they describe as a unique toilet experience. It includes its very own double toilet cubicles. <laughs> 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 Two cu two toilets in one cubicle, so that you can um, hold hands as you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need to go. Are you coming with me <laughs> to, to go to the toilet at the same time? Um, yeah, that's unnecessary. There was already a hole in the wall between the two, so um, you know you could. <laughs> Yeah, it could I think be that's what putting your hand through the world's so. largest glory hole. <laughs> they took away the glory hole and just left <laughs> two. Uh, it's like, yeah, no, that's that's weird. Uh, maybe they <laughs> ran out of money and they couldn't separate them. No, 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 uh, this is deliberate. They um, <laughs> the the pub was recently nominated for Bar of the Year awards and describes itself as where exquisite decor meets unforgettable experience. So it's a very unforgettable experience to. Well, yeah, you're going to have an unforgettable experience with someone sitting there <laughs> staring at you while you're taking a dump. <laughs> Especially if they like serve dodgy food there too and add to the whole experience where you get to. I mean, there's only like a 98.5% chance that they do sell dodgy food. So, <laughs> you know. <laughs> They do say that on their social media that they are one of the best venues for watching sport. Yeah, one of the best venues on their street. <laughs> there are no other venues. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. I hadn't heard of this place, but maybe. I mean, it's very unlikely I will go to Swords, but if I do, because it's, it's actually it's right near the airport. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's a great place to be just all the best places are right beside the airport. You know that. Everywhere, Obviously. yeah. <laughs> so that's, yeah. That's very My favorite is in um, in LA. There was at a time a guy at a red light who used to sell secondhand banana skins <laughs> outside the airport. <laughs> the best souvenirs I ever got from LA. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, another great thing with this is if you like, say you take a long flight and you... Um, I don't know, you want to stop off after the flight and you can't make it all the way home because you've eaten something great on the plane. Now, with friends, you can share a toilet and enjoy that experience together. I mean, 
you know, it's not going to be misused at all, which I think is the greatest thing. Everyone's going to use it completely for the reason they're suggesting and no other business whatsoever. Yeah, well, I mean, it does encourage people to hook up. So there is that. Like, well, it, it gives you an excuse. It, it encourages group cocaine ingestion because that's what's going to happen. <laughs> They probably have specific cocaine mirrors in that bathroom. I'm just saying. So, I mean, you know, whatever. Love you, Dublin. <laughs> yeah, good if you've had one too many Guinnesses. And... If the Guinness has gone bad, like if you get a bad Guinness, that's where you're going to end up for most of the night is in that two toilet cubicles. <laughs> Sometimes you need a friend with you when... Yeah, you just, you know... You're losing all the hydration from your body and your friend is there to support you. <laughs> <laughs> what a place. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, that's just, let's just hope it goes well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, surprisingly, they have a lot of positive reviews online, so. A lot of people, I guess, enjoying the. Uh... Bringing their Tinder dates to the pub. <laughs> <laughs> hey, let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> you don't need to wait for me I won't wait for you <laughs> yeah for sure um what's the most awkward thing that can happen when a plane lands uh some fucking idiots clap well so. okay second most awkward <laughs> um I don't know um Someone doesn't clap. <laughs> <laughs> Third most awkward. Uh, let's see. I don't know. The doors won't open. Not that, but it's along those lines. Um, okay. It's a bit worse than that. Oh, shit. Um, a British Airways passenger was stuck in their seat for three hours after their plane landed. And they had to cut the guy out <laughs> was the in-flight food that good <laughs> jesus so the the passenger was wedged in his seat for about three hours after the six and a half hour flight from lagos landed at heathrow airport uh he was in the seat 1a the much desired seat that is typically reserved for executive club card gold holders they report Okay. Um, the cabin crew got involved and tried to calm the passenger after he realized that he was unable to leave his seat, but they were unable to shift him. <laughs> Emergency services were called to get the passenger out with an engineering note outlining the plan. Never a good seat when they need an engineering <laughs> <laughs> thing to get you out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So they had to remove the sweet door and use a hoist to eject him from the seat. That's you're never living that one down, my friend. <laughs> they had to get a hoist to take you out of your airplane seat. That <clears throat> may be a sign to start dieting. Yeah, you know, every now and then throw a little uh, lettuce on your burgers, that kind of thing. Have a Wait, little exercise. How did he even get in if he? <laughs> just had to, yeah, he had to be forced into the seat, and he's like, "This is fine. <laughs> I won't have to get up for six hours." The other thing is that, like, the uh, getting through planes is usually like a tight fit. So you would think mm. that if you get stuck in your seat in a first class seat, that you would struggle to even walk down the aisle. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, so, I mean, you know, I feel like you should realize if you're getting on a plane that you might be too big for the seat. And just alert the cabin crew and be like, hey, my fat ass ain't going to be able to get back out of this seat. What's the plan? Just don't wait till you land. Say it <laughs> when you're getting on the plane. And then sit on it and be like, ah, it's not going to work long term. 
Yeah, it's a shame yeah. that I don't have video of it because it would be interesting to see how <laughs> somebody was like, sorry, sir, we need to film this for training purposes and <laughs> also for the lols on YouTube. So <laughs> Say hi to my fans. F in the chat for. <laughs> sorry, sir. Could, could you just could you just say please subscribe for more videos? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Could you just say get stuck in the like button for? <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, <laughs> that's pretty awful. That is that is like terrible. Like it, it all it always has surprised me how tight a fit sometimes getting into those um, business class seats is. Like you know, well, getting out of them actually is a little bit tricky sometimes, especially. If you've just woken up or if it's just a bit of a you've had a couple of drinks or whatever, sometimes you're like, this is a fucking tight squeeze. So I don't know. I, I just okay. started thinking, imagine you link this together and instead of flying to Heathrow, he was flying to Dublin and <laughs> his friend had to sit in the toilet next to him. <laughs> Would there be enough room? Would th that is the question <laughs> that we all need to know answer to <laughs> what happens in that scenario um, but like if you got in there must be a way to get out you just need to kind of hold yourself in a certain way or something i, I don't know and clearly they got him out i presume then to take unless he's carrying off. parts of the seat with him forever <laughs> <laughs> literally stuck to his ass how did he get the seatbelt on i like i know they have the uh extenders but surely yeah, it's a good question, actually. <laughs> We're going to need people to support us by sponsoring us to fly in first class on British Airways. And to then get we'll really wear, fat. Yeah, well, that or we just wear a fat suit. And... Yeah, I guess. It's not as fun, <laughs> but... Yeah, that's probably the healthier way to go with it. Uh... <laughs> yeah. All right, man. That's that's what we need to do. People sponsor us. Hit the donate button the <laughs> for our first class flights. Uh, We're raising money for an important cause. Every dollar counts. So don't be any stingy. <laughs> to recreate this exact incident, <laughs> which there is no video of that we need to have video of. So. The world needs the video. Yeah, we do. That, that person is never going to get on a plane again. I don't think. Until yeah, well, they lose... They probably know. shouldn't have gone on the plane in the first place. Like, <laughs> there's got to be some level of. I understand that airlines can't be like weighing everyone, but at some point, if you're getting stuck in a first class seat, I think if you're too big like, for the seat, then how come can't I can't it? bring eight kilos of carry on luggage, but yeah. someone can not get out of a first class seat? Well, that does come into quite. If you can't bring you know, whatever it is, but somebody can weigh 10 times that more than you do. I can only bring six of my seven butt plugs because I only <laughs> have so much space. <laughs> it's a hard choice picking yeah. which one to leave behind. Yeah. And then I don't have one for every day of the week. So I'm going to go buy one where I get there and then, you know, Fun donate to charity when I leave. <laughs> well known that charity, sir. <laughs> Running low on book books. <laughs> <out there>. <laughs> <laughs> Urgent yeah. appeal. <laughs> we should do one of those appeals with the crying dogs. <laughs> Black and white footage with the sad music. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there are too many people suffering out there. Did you know not everybody has a book plug for every day of the week? <laughs> You can help change this. <laughs> Some people have to use a butt plug more than once a week. <laughs> There's real suffering out there. It's true. <laughs> well, you've been... Well, you know how there's a place in France where the naked, naked ladies dance? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, apparently in France... You have to wear Speedos to the pool. Mm -hmm. Did you know this and do you know why? 
<laughs> I did not, but I presume <laughs> it's because of something somebody did at one point um, with your penis. So, no, this is an actual real weird story that. So in France, in pools, you have to wear speedos because uh, of hygiene. They believe that shorts are unhygienic, and therefore, to go into a pool in France, you have to wear speedos. <laughs> and according to this article, it's like a thing that a lot of people have come up with and come across how, that. How are shorts unhygienic? What? What's that all? Why? What? <laughs> because you wear them around and somehow get dirt on them. I mean, you know what gets in speedos, don't you? So, <laughs> especially when I'm going to be bringing six out of my seven bub lugs. Like, I mean, you know, <laughs> you know, everyone's got their own thing, but <laughs> yeah, I feel like um, I feel like they should retract that law. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, you know. It's only for men, too. Like, men have to wear the Speedos. You're not allowed to wear long swimming trunks. I mean, so if you go with long swimming trunks, they make you take them off? They literally have signs at all the pools that say this. And they've got wow. actual examples of the photos, so... Skinny dipping it is. <laughs> uh... Yeah. All right. You didn't want me to... <laughs> <laughs> Just another reason to love the French. There we go. Don't think anyone loves the French. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then so linked to that, there are five little known Spanish rules uh -oh. um for holidays. So a new law in Spain last year um, has banned smoking on the beach. So you're not allowed to smoke on the beach. Good. I like it. Uh, if you're looking to let loose and have a few drinks, you'll need to be wary of some local laws. Uh, so like Ibiza and Mallorca and Menorca introduced new alcohol laws back in 2020. Um, buying alcohol at shops is banned between the hours of 9.30 p.m. and 8 a.m. Well. <laughs> Happy hours, pub crawls, and two-for-one drinks offers have also been banned, and fines of up to 50,000 pounds can be given to anyone advertising party boats. <laughs> so what's the point of going to Spain anymore? <laughs> Wait, you can't have a happy hour? That's that's shitty. That's unhappy. Uh, yeah, what are you supposed to have? Fucking depressed hour? <laughs> uh, <laughs> come on, yeah. dude. We have depressed hour, and that's why you get to pay less for your drinks, because you're depressed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is it. Yeah, that's how you get around that one. Happy hour is the, the thing, man. Come on, that's not, that's not cool. But, um, yeah. Um, wearing a bikini. So um, in Barcelona, people can only wear bikinis on the beach and holiday, ma holiday makers could get caught wearing one in the town center could face a fine of up to 260,000, uh, sorry, 260 pounds. Fuck's sake. Um, same in Mallorca, but Mallorca has fines of 500 pounds. I think that's very discriminatory towards those of us who like to wear bikinis in town and those of us who like to look at people wearing bikinis in town. <laughs> I should reverse both of those <laughs> for both of those reasons. Uh, yeah, terrible, terrible decision there from the old Spanish. Balconing is banned, which is the term given to people who jump off their balcony into a swimming pool below. I mean, that just sounds scary. <laughs> <laughs> it depends on yeah. the circumstance. I mean... If the balcony is close to the pool, yeah, then it's fine. But if you're doing a 20 meter jump, I guess. I feel yeah. like the only way you are doing that is if you have had a lot of alcohol and that's not the best time to jump off a balcony. Well, some places place. here have, and this is rare, but there are a few places that have the balcony 
actually goes into the pool. So you're essentially straight into the pool and you're kind of paying extra for that too. So all right. Well. You wouldn't even have to jump, you just fall into the pool from a balcony. <laughs> See, that sounds more yeah. <laughs> as long as you can fall into it and you don't have to put any effort. There's no Olympic diving standards. Even uh, though I insist on Olympic diving in all cases. <laughs> Of course, but you know, just in case, sometimes those rules go out the window. Um, it's also elite, forbidden to play paddle tennis on the sand during the summer months in Malaga, and you can get fined up to six hundred and sixty-one pounds. That so, seems ridiculous. So Spain is very weird with their laws. So just don't go there. A couple of weird beach laws there, to be honest. So, not happy with your Spain. Fix them. Change it back. Just go to France and wear your uh, speedos. Yeah. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> um, a Quebec. So, we're going more French into the Canadian French. Three. And um, more very logical laws as they are known to have. So a Quebec trucking company has been ordered to reinstate a driver fired for drinking and driving. Why do you think they've had to do this? They Hang on, they had to reinstate him because he was fired for drink driving. Yes. Um, is it because he was... Not drink driving? First mistake, <laughs> not a he. It's a oh. she. Oh, A okay. female truck driver. Yeah, okay. Is it because of their diversity quotas? Because <laughs> <laughs> if it is, I got some issues. Nope. <laughs> Nothing to do with that. All right. Um. And it's not because she wasn't drinking. Okay, so she was. It's not that she was actually sober. <laughs> so she was guilty of the thing. She was a truck driver, so they fired her, and then they had to reinstate her. Oh my god, why <laughs> did she own the truck? <laughs> this is something like they were screwed if they didn't employ her. No, this know. is more like how absurd <laughs> Quebec is. <laughs> okay, um, so she drank nine beers. Okay, and lost way. control of her truck uh-huh. um, on a Pennsylvania highway. Okay. Um, her actions amounted to serious misconduct, but her drinking was the result of a disability. So I guess you could say it's um, diversity. <laughs> Do you want to guess? <laughs> Do you want to guess what disability she has? Uh, I've never heard of this disability, but I think it's going to be quite popular in Ireland when we do find out about it. I would just say that, like, all of Ireland has it. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, the disability may as well be that she's Irish, but that's not what it's called. (laughs) Often argued that that was the case. (laughs) You should all be on disability. Uh, well, according to this, you should, because her disability is alcoholism. Oh. <laughs> hey, we're, we're fine. It's, we're not all alcoholics. We could quit any time we wanted. Only 99% of Irish people. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a drinking problem. We quite like it. <laughs> not a problem at all. <laughs> so, anyways... So, and so some they have people to, are, some people haven't started kindergarten yet. <laughs> so, so this woman got drunk, drove her truck, crashed it, like caused. Drank, I mean, she only drank nine beers before driving a t- truck. Yeah, so perfectly fine. <laughs> like wait, and she. So they, they then. I mean, there is a big difference if it's nine pints or nine. Tiny beers. Like, <laughs> there is a yeah. massive difference. But yeah, even exactly. nine tiny beers, you're way over the limit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but she, so they, so she was convicted of drink driving 
And then she was fired. Yes, which was wrong because... And then she was, was like, but I'm an alcoholic, so they had to rehire her. Yes. Fucking Canada is fucked up, man. <laughs> <laughs> what? So, and trucking company Group A Robert uh, should have made a reasonable accommodation for her. So they should have made it reasonable for her to get drunk. Um, this is what the labor arbitrator trader has um, said in a written decision. Wow. So this is like actual legal government thing that <laughs> they've decided this. The night of the accident, she needed to she needed to drink. They've said in an actual government thing. She admitted that even though she knew she shouldn't, the need was stronger, like something that she couldn't control. She was fired after she was involved in a single vehicle crash shortly before midnight on June 30, 2022. The facts of the case say the driver stopped twice to buy a six-pack of beer as she drove from a Montreal suburb to Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, <laughs> so what she, happened to the other three beers? <laughs> so, <laughs> Twelve beers, three of them are unaccounted for. <laughs> 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 that is the the bigger question. <laughs> what happened to the other three beers? <laughs> You're such an alcoholic. Why didn't you drink all the fucking beers? That's what I want to know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you couldn't control it, but you only drank nine. Where <laughs> <clears throat> the woman the woman admitted she drank at least nine during the yeah. trip. But she said she didn't remember whether she drank the final three on the road. So oh, there okay. You go. There we go. Yeah. So she drank nine, crashed, then finished the final three, possibly. <laughs> or she drank she them before she started not driving. Sure she thinks she did. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, she doesn't remember if she drank them on the road. So perhaps while she was buying it, she quickly shotgun one <laughs> the first time and two the second time. Possibly. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, after the crash, which damaged the truck but caused no injuries, she was arrested with a blood alcohol level. Do you want to guess her blood alcohol level? Uh, 11. <laughs> no. uh, I don't know well, what it would be. So, so in their terms, they're using the zero point. Oh, 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is essentially dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had a blood alcohol level that was 0 0.18 more than twice the legal limit now I want to remind you that you drank 20 drinks and blew <laughs> 0 0.2 so yeah. and yeah you had had a what lot to drink at that point so and what did we do? We got up the next day, totally fine, went and got more beers. So I drove home. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um yeah, I yeah. <laughs> that was so, a funny yeah. thing. Um <laughs> yeah, the um But you yeah, like yeah. you as an Irish person was actually drunk at that point. So like you think of how drunk this woman was. As a French Canadian woman, <laughs> driving <Yeah>. a truck <laughs> just goes to prove Canadians can't drink for fuck. So there you go. <laughs> like if uh, they were better drinkers, you'd have been able to drive that truck home. Yeah, but I know now if I get fired, I can just be like, "But it's a disability." <laughs> calm, calm down. So, well, I wonder if. You said you were in French Canada. So regardless of where you were, if you said, oh, well, I was working in French Canada that day, so therefore I want this under French Canadian law, and therefore <laughs> the fact that I was 0 0.29 and just barely alive <laughs> <laughs> was due to my disability. <laughs> It would yeah. be funny to go to like the disability place with like people that are missing arms and legs and whatever, and then you're there like with a six pack. <laughs> like, 
I haven't worked Can I get one you. of those uh, uh, badges for my car so I can get the good parking yeah. spots, please? <laughs> yeah, does she get that? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I, 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 that's what we need. I, I don't think this is enough. They do, shouldn't just reinstate her, but her truck should get disability parking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there we go. Um, you know, beer is the solver of all the problems people have. It's like, yeah, I might have crashed just because I'm addicted to beer. What are you going to do? Yeah. Now, as as someone with a disability driving a truck and more than double the legal limit, using this as the reasoning, mm -hmm. and therefore it's the company's fault, as mm -hmm. the government has decided. Sure. When do you think she told them about her disability? I would say conveniently as they're about to fire her or just after. About a week after the crash. So oh, there we go. There we go. It's not that she, it's not that. So, yeah. So basically, and then it's a, one day bef, after. Oh, sorry. A day after she sought medical help to stop drinking, but a week after the crash. So she's still got a week of. Uh, Partying and before. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's an interesting one. You know, you find, find all sorts of people with their advice being like, you know what? You might get away with calling this a disability. <laughs> <laughs> and then just promise you will only drink one six pack on the road next time. And then you'll be fine. Yeah, well, I mean, if you're going to be a pilot and <laughs> do shots as you're <laughs> taking off. <laughs> I mean, most of being a pilot is autopilot, so it's fine, you know. Yeah. If you do shots, do shots, take off your stewardesses, um, you know, all kinds of things. Um, the driver told her employer about a drinking problem. After that, she was officially fired after she completed an inpatient addiction program. Um, but she said there was no, uh, the, sorry, the government said there was no evidence that the company asked or verified whether their troubled employee suffered from alcoholism. So again, how heartless of them that when she crashed a truck drunk, that they didn't ask her if she suffered from alcoholism. Yeah, it's kind of something they should have considered, to be honest. And all employers out there, now you'll know. Yes, yeah, so you're going to have to ask. I mean, this fundamentally means that in French Canada, you have to ask your employees absolutely everything prior to, and then if they mention anything, you then have to adapt to that. Mm -hmm. Because you should know. Um, the driver told the arbitrator... Even if they break a break the law, then you're still at fault. So as a company, reason. yeah, very you hire reason. somebody. It's a serious issue. That's your. It's on you. So there we go, Canada, with the with the rules. <laughs> um, and then so she said, there's no evidence that the group asked or verified whether the troubled employee had done that. I had that. Thing. The driver told the arbitrator the company could have installed an alcohol testing device in her truck after the crash or found other work for her. So, you know, you, you crash a truck drunk driving like you should. You should I make it easier for her. I don't think it's your responsibility to make sure that you are sober enough to drive a truck. Uh, that's the company's responsibility after yeah. you've told them that occasionally you... Uh, <laughs> you drink alcohol, so yeah. Um, the company, <laughs> meanwhile, told them that the collective agreement between the company and the union representing the drivers is clear. The penalty for drinking and driving is immediate termination of employment. How unreasonable! I mean, yeah, that's very discriminatory. So yeah. Um. Uh, the the spokesman for the for Teamsters Canada, the union that represents the driver and challenged her dismissal, said it has an obligation to defend its members in work related matters, regardless of the circumstances. 
But he says that road safety is a priority for the union, mm. which is a bit of a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Sounds- and then it is a bit ironic that in the linked thing of this, so whilst that's the case... Quebec is also bringing in a law that um, if you get caught drink driving twice in Quebec, you have to get an ignition breathalyzer for life installed in your cars to drive. Nice. So whilst it's not the, the whilst it's the company's fault if you drink drive and crash a truck without telling them that you have this drunk driving. You have alcoholism. At the same time, if you get caught drink driving twice, you have to install a breathalyzer to start the car every time. But that's, you just get someone else to blow into the breathalyzer for you. Just be like, hey, come to come over here, blow on this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> people are going to be like, oh, yeah, I'll come over there and blow that for you. So, yeah, no worries. It's just, yeah, such a opposite. <laughs> and so absurd, like. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is. You know. How French Canada exists as a place. <laughs> well, without wanting to cause an international incident here, uh, fucking lightweights. So that's all <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, sometimes if you can't remember whether you finished those final three beers, I mean, yeah, that is the real crime. Exactly. exactly. I, I believe every the company beer, should have brought that out. <laughs> every beer is important, not just the first. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy two six packs, you best be having all 12. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no, there should be no confusion. It should be, you should know. Exactly when, what landmarks you were at for each beer. <laughs> you can't be that good of an alcoholic if you don't. Exactly. Exactly. And yeah, I don't think I'd ever fly in French Canada again now after that. No, it doesn't sound good. It doesn't sound good. <laughs> <laughs> can't be thinking that it's a safe place to drive either when. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. Anytime you see a French Canadian registration plate, just get out of its way. Uh, <laughs> Or chuck them a beer. <laughs> yeah, just get them to chuck you a beer. They're, they've got too many. They <laughs> yeah, balls. ask for a free beer. <laughs> Give me your beers, you fucking lightweight. <laughs> You're not going to remember what you dr- how many of these you drank. <laughs> I do love the idea, though, as well. That, like, she admits to the nine, but the other three, it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> no, I only drank nine. What are you getting <laughs> on my back for? <laughs> yeah. Drink the other three. Especially when they've taken her blood alcohol anyway. So how many beers or whatever she's had is kind of irrelevant. Like she's massively over the limit. So to say that, yeah, I had nine and I don't remember what happened to the other three. Doesn't really like it's a who cares at that point. Yeah. (laughs) It's not even like you had two and you thought you had one or something where it's like close enough where you could say, oh, I shouldn't have. Had any, especially while you're driving a truck. I can't even believe you're allowed to be over the. Like here, the the limit if you're driving a truck is still zero. So, yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, any beers is too many. So, I yeah, yeah, yeah. One beer and you can't drive professionally. I think is the is the law. <laughs> <laughs> Nine beers and you haven't had enough. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, have you ever gone too fast while filming something? Um, <laughs> depends what we're referencing here. <laughs> Whether I can legally talk about that or not, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I have not. <laughs> For the record. I only drank nine very quickly beers, not <laughs> 12. I don't I don't recall too much about that night where it was like the 20 beers. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> everything else. <Good. laughs> well, a Google Street View car led police on a hundred mile per hour chase and then crashed into a creek. 
Beautiful. Um, in parts of it where the speed limit was only 30, sorry, 55 and 40 miles per hour. So well over the speed limit. But I'm sure they would have got some great Google <laughs> street view. Google street imaging really upgrades their, their technology to much quickerly, much quicklier take the, uh, the the images so they can be updated sooner. I like it. They're working yeah. on that tech, improving the world. They're... We need, we need live updates, and then the way we're going to get it is by Google Street View cars <laughs> driving at 100 miles per hour. I think that's fair. Yeah. You know. <laughs> and I hope that this person gets off from there. Definitely. Smash Plus, the they car. probably only had like six or seven beers, so it's probably <laughs> fine. Probably fine. Um, and do you want to guess where this happened? I'm, it sounds very much something that would happen in the in like Alabama or somewhere. Okay, weirdly, it happened in Indiana. But the guy who did it is from Florida. He's always from Florida. The guy who does these things, he's always from Florida. So, But why would he be doing this in <laughs> Alabama? <laughs> Maybe they Florida. just have the one guy who drives around the entire country. <laughs> he he's, got a lot of, that day. he's got a lot of streets to photograph and not a lot of time. Yeah, that's why he had to go so fast. He was like, uh, I got to get through Indiana today. It's not going to happen unless I go super fast. So, um, do you want to guess his excuse? Um, he was, um, too, you know, I don't know. Let's see. He didn't realize how fast he was going. Well, he's being chased by the police, so he knew. <laughs> Is that his excuse? <laughs> <laughs> he on the police, I just naturally decided to go faster. That's what you do. But sometimes you see that. Like, actually, yesterday I saw a car where the police were behind them with the lights flashing, and they just kept going slowly. And <laughs> the, the police car with the lights flashing just kept staying behind them, and it took them forever to notice. And then by the time they pulled over, they pulled over where I was walking. So I got there, like, halfway through the conversation, and you could see them, like, arguing with this person of like, why would you not stop if the police are literally right behind you following you with the lights flashing? Yeah. Well, <laughs> that happened to me once. <laughs> Where This is a long time ago. It was, around, it was almost Christmas time. And I was driving home from whatever job I had at the time. And um, I didn't know, but my, my back lights were out. And... Uh, the police came up behind me and started flashing. But the guy in front of me was driving like a fucking lunatic. <laughs> so I thought they were flashing for him. So I try, kept trying to get out of their way. <laughs> so I, was like, I was like, why don't you just go around me? Come on, like, there's lots of room. But it was a dark road. So I was like, oh, maybe they're just, I don't know, staying back or whatever. So then I took a turn off and they followed me. And I was like, oh, shit, they're coming out. <laughs> but then when I took the turn, there was nowhere literally to tur to pull in. It was like a, an old country road. So I had to keep going. <laughs> and, um, yeah, it was about 10 minutes later. I pulled in there like, did you not see us? I was like, I did see you, but I didn't think you were stopping me. What are you stopping me for? <laughs> and I got a nice day in court. So there we go. Uh, <laughs> it was, it was really fun. over that. Um, yeah. Also, I hadn't paid my car tax. Um, so and the they're like, dude, you got to pay your car tax. And I was like, I for what actually happened, I could have just paid a fine, but I was going away uh, like two days after Christmas. So I put the notification of the fine into like a drawer somewhere, completely forgot about it. And three months later, they were like, you got to come to court because you didn't pay your fine. <laughs> so that was that was fun. <laughs> and then I just I just paid the fine and it was fine. Everything was grand. But um yeah. So 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 if you see police lights behind you, do pull in. <laughs> That's my suggestion. <laughs> Unless you've only drank nine of your twelve beers, in which case yeah, you've got to finish some of three. I've been drinking. They were just like, <laughs> like your, your back lights are out. I was like, oh, I didn't know that. I'm just going up here. And they were like, okay, we'll let you go. And then 
But then the, the lady was like, I'm just going to check your tax. Damn it. Forgot wow. to do that. Because <laughs> it was Christmas and I was busy. And the job I had was like, I was working like 12 hours a day. So I forgot about it. <sighs> so anyway, it's all good. Car is taxed now, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, speaking of going to court in Ireland, a Dublin man who made 12 injury claims tell, told a judge what after being caught lying. I'm very sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <coughs> He um, told a judge to fuck off. <laughs> That's what that means in Irish. Uh, <laughs> it's an old Celtic saying. <laughs> Double man Paul Weldon, who has taken 12 separate personal injury claims in 20 years, mm -hmm. was seeking up to 60,000 euros in Dublin court this week after claiming he tripped and fell and hit his head. Um, in Dublin city center on the 4th of September, 2015. So over eight years ago, he fell, but now he's suing. Uh, he was previously given a suspended sentence after he shouted racist abuse at an Indian restaurant staff. <laughs> yeah, they do that. They do that. Yeah. Um, he was suing the yeah, Dublin city council as well as well, a couple of companies which own the buildings where he hit his head um, and then was defended by their insurance company. Um, he arrived at the courts in a three-piece suit and was in a jovial mood shortly before the case began. Um, he loudly inquired in the corridor outside the court if any settlement had been offered. And then, well, did you get me any money, he asked. <laughs> However, no settlement had been offered and the case was listed to go ahead. Mm -hmm. Um now when he he then walked into the courtroom and approached the court register and asked if he had time to go off for lunch, even <laughs> though it was 10 30 a.m. Nice. <laughs> His case began shortly afterwards, and he remained in a positive mood as he took the stand and told the court his about his accident. I was walking down like a human being does. Mm -hmm. I hit my head off the wall on the left side. His own legal counsel asked him if he had any previous claims. He listed off three claims, which were claims from Dublin bus and from tripping on the street. I'm telling you the truth, he said. Asked if he'd made any more claims since the incident before the court, he said none at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. Um, defense barrister cross-examined and put it to him he was lying about how many accidents he'd been involved in. And then, uh, how many have you be had in the last 20 years, she asked. Now, listen to me. Anything I do is 100% straight. No lies, no messing, he replied, as all honest people say. Yeah, all honest people say that. It's very well known. She then put it to him that he'd made 12 claims. Mm -hmm. He said, if I'd done it, I want it, and I was entitled. Which, again, as all innocent people. Um, however, she said that he had also withdrawn claims. She added that he'd sued a, the, the bus on four separate occasions, even though he claimed he had only done it twice. Yeah, well, it's a shitty bus service, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, obviously, Dublin bus needs to up their game if this one person is able to... Um... So the uh, defense barrister um, highlighted that he's being represented by six different law firms in his various cases. <laughs> and then he asked if, it, if that was against the law. And she said it wasn't, but pointed out that lying on the stand was. It's harsh words. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, and then she added that his claim that he hadn't been in any other accidents since the current case was also a lie and said he had taken four more injury claims since then. Beautiful. What a career. <laughs> Uh, she said that you've had 12 claims in 20 years. When the judge asked, you said you had three. Mm -hmm. um, and she pointed out that he claimed the multiple times for tripping on cellar doors and walking down footpaths. Um, and then the judge pointed out and stopped them and said, in pleadings, you were asked if you had previous claims. And then he listed the claims he had disclosed. And then said, so that's the extent of what you were previously in, but you accepted you moved from one solicitor to another. There is nothing wrong with that, but that concerns people like me, the judge said. Mm -hmm. um, he said, cases, cases rely on credibility of those giving evidence. I don't find your evidence credit, credible. I'm dismissing your case. Um, he got off the stand and started to walk towards the exit. The judge was still addressing him, um, warning he could uh, expect similar scrutiny in, the, in his upcoming claims, but the guy interrupted him and said, fuck off, <laughs> as he made his way out the door. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it must be quite disappointing when you, you wake up on a morning and you're like, I'm going to get 50 grand today, 60 grand. And then the judge is like, no. I mean, I think he restrained himself quite well by just saying fuck off. So, yeah. And especially when, I mean, this guy's been so wronged by the the courts and the councils yeah. that, and the bosses, you know. like, you know. Yeah. I mean, honestly, it, he's doing his best to walk like a human uh, being and, and this, the footpath is getting in his way. So you can understand how difficult that is. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, I I think it's Ireland's fault. Oh, that's a dangerous country, comment to make. Uh, the country owes it more, you know. I think you should fuck off. And, uh, <laughs> he, should, he should learn to walk like an actual human being and not be blaming this great country, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sounds like he's he's made quite a, quite a bit of money off not being able to walk down footpaths and buses. So I think he needs a job as a truck driver in Quebec. And then, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a good, good idea. Good idea. <laughs> oh, I'd love that. Love it. <laughs> this is the follow up story. Man who was too tall judge to fuck off becomes truck driver in Quebec. <laughs> and wins. <laughs> wins after drinking 20 beers and smashing a truck yeah. into a school bus. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. I like it. Uh, um, Australia's first what went broke? Say what now? Uh, something from Australia has gone broke. A company, the first of something. Do you want to guess what it is? Um, first, uh, Vegan fast food restaurant. There's some elements to that is kind of what it is. All right. Um, uh, Not being uh, exactly that, but along the lines of stuff we've been talking about. Is it something? To, oh, hang on. I think I might know what this is. Is this uh, the non-alcoholic alcohol shop? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Australia's first... Yeah, bottle shop with no alcohol um, has gone broke. <laughs> like we've we've talked about zero percent alcohol beers and stuff uh, How before, be and it's like I, I think we're in the same boat. It's like what the fuck is that all about, and uh, why does it exist? But I think the main thing we need to to worry about here is. That person went to a bank and was like, "Hey, here's my business plan. Do you think you can back me?" And they were like, "Yes." This is a well, you idea. don't know that. She might have just put her own money in or inherited money. or. It's true, but I'm going to assume she had a banking relationship. <laughs> like if so, Even if she wasn't borrowing money, she had to open a bank account um, to run the business. 
And and I think the bank should be ashamed for taking that business. So it's a stupid idea. Because uh, non-alcoholic drinks, I'm pretty sure, could be just sold anywhere. They don't. You don't need a license or anything, do you? Yeah, because so. in the supermarkets, they they sell the non-alcoholic in the regular supermarket, and then attached yeah. to them, they have the bottle area, which has different hours and whatever else. But yeah, yeah they the non-alcoholic ones are with all the other like soft drinks and stuff, so you can easily buy them there, and. The big stores, like the supermarkets, have cheap stuff, so it's kind of a hard market to win as well. It makes zero sense. Like I don't see how anyone would think that would be a huge, a big enough market to ha- sustain its own store when the supermarkets are selling the same stuff but cheaper. So she she had realistic goals, though. She had projected that her business would make twenty million dollars in the first five years. <laughs> but, OK, well, I take back what I said about the bank stuff. And in a video for prospective um, backer Westpac, a bank about okay. brewing up success, she expressed hopes the business would expand really rapidly. So she did actually go to the bank and. We do have plans for six more stores in Sydney and 20 across Australia in the next three years, she said. Which is a bit odd when you only got one. (laughs) Three years, I'm going to take over the entire market in Australia. We're going to open store after store. How much money you got in your personal bank account? Like $50, but it's going to be fine. The business is going to take off. We should go into a bank and tell them about the podcast and how in 10 years we're going to have... 36 localized <laughs> podcasts <laughs> doing the we're gonna same have, thing. We're going to like have all the podcast market. It's going to be just us. Uh, if you listen to a podcast, that'll be us. So <laughs> think about it. Think how much that's worth. <laughs> yeah, just think of like all these outsourced podcasts and how much content. <laughs> so I really hope like somebody goes, like we should do it. Go into the bank and be like, Joe Rogan got $100 million off Spotify. <laughs> For his podcast, there's two of us. That's and, 200 billion. <laughs> so. And he only does one podcast. We're going to start. We're not just going to do our own. We're going to have outsourced <laughs> podcasts too. So we're going to hire people in India to do the podcast for us in yeah. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's going to be a great success. So we'll take 5 million. Um, as a as a start, yeah. <laughs> uh, she said, "I love being a disruptor. I love disrupting." Oh, she yeah, disrupted your bank, <laughs> <laughs> disrupted your investors. <laughs> uh, and she also said, "There's nothing more exciting than opening a non-alcoholic bottle shop right across the road from our friends at Vintage Cellars," which may also be ironic that. Uh, like, I'm pretty sure that most of the alcohol stores also sell non-alcoholic drinks. So you're actually yeah. not opening it up the ro- up across the road against a company that just sells alcohol. You're sell- opening it across the road from a company that sells exactly what you sell. You're not even competing with that business except for like maybe 3% of their business because... The market for alcoholic beverages, the, the consumer is, who's like, ah, oh, I'm going to get some beers, I'm going to get a bottle of whiskey or whatever, is not thinking to himself, you know what I want? I'm going to just go across the street and get some of this non-alcoholic stuff instead. It's not the same market. So I don't think I don't think that was a... Uh, also, the most exciting thing, really, it's like <laughs> you you lack excitement in your life if that's the case. You need to maybe... I don't know. Go on Drink some, beer. Get, go some swingers parties or something. Get some <laughs> excitement in your actual excitement in your life. Well, she also said in that video to the bank, I was in the paper the other day and there must have been 10 or 20 comments on there saying I was going to go broke in a week. So she proved them wrong. <laughs> I mean, she did last more than a week, but, you know, maybe not much more. Yes, but still, those people were. Actually, those people, quite smart. They they knew this is a stupid business, so they tried they, to save her money. 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> she once had dreams of rivaling Dan Murphy's, which I believe they have like hundreds of stores. Like whatever it is, is like some godly amount of stores. Um, that, yeah, there is like zero chance. Okay. They have 250 stores. So she had dreams of rivaling them, which. I mean, that was never going to happen. So just like we're going to rival Joe Rogan next week. That is likely to happen. So I have dreams about it, you know. I mean, you know, I think if Joe Rogan had us as a guest on his show, we would actually overtake him very soon after. That's all we need. We just need him to respond to one of the 4000 emails we send every week. Just one. Come on, <laughs> investors, back us up. Uh. <laughs> and then, of course, it's not the fact that um, she so she she claims that her idea was copied by the major chains and their sales of the same non-alcoholic drinks she stocked gave her stores no point of difference. Yeah, welcome to doing business. <laughs> So there's nothing to stop another retailer selling the same product as you. Unless you have exclusive deals, in which case the suppliers wouldn't sell to them. So that's which that's they're not going to deal with one small yeah. store. Yeah. So they're not going to do that. It's your fault you didn't get those deals in place, which and then we're like, just thought you were impervious to the other stores for copying the, the deal or, or the products you had. But also, it's a crazy idea. Like nobody, like maybe in a different country, but like in Australia, in Ireland, in the UK, those stores are not going to work. So, yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't even know how the supermarkets can justify having as many as they do there. Absolutely. Let alone, yeah, going to some random place. If you went into, I reckon, if you went to a supermarket and you like put a mark on a bottle, just like a little dot on the <laughs> label somewhere, and you just kept checking every week because it's still there. It'll be there for a week. If I do that every week. <laughs> yeah. So it's, uh, yeah. It's these definitely are, not going to work. These are my you packet. You, these are my <laughs> packet of crisps, and every week I'm going to come back and make sure that I put them at the back and see if they're still there. <laughs> I mean, that's reasonable. We do that all the time, for sure. But, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's not going to, I don't know. But anyway, maybe um, her next business idea will be good. Maybe she'll be like, I don't know. Well, Just, before that, she sought voluntary administration, needing a professional who can oversee my business with the hope of the restructure would save the business and even enable it to thrive. Albeit on a smaller scale than initially envisaged. You had one store. How do you get smaller <laughs> than that? <laughs> Like her living park room, outside? <laughs> <laughs> her car? She could. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> <laughs> she said, I'm open to anyone coming to save me. I'm still so passionate. She says, I mean, there, there is genuinely a place out there for a business that specializes in non alcoholic drinks. There clearly I isn't. This has been proven <laughs> by you, lady. <laughs> now, she says, I'm hoping that I can ride through this storm and find a niche where I can survive alongside these big boys. I'm a fighter, but I need help now. Yes, well, you need to be helped to find some common sense. <laughs> Everyone knows non-alcoholic bottle shop's not going to work. I want to start a cafe chain that only does decaf cafes, coffees. There we go. That's another shitty idea. <laughs> <laughs> decaf. <laughs> We're going to take over the world by fighting caffeine with only decaf <laughs> coffees. Yeah. No yeah. hot chocolates, none of that stuff. Only decaf. Yeah, yeah. We have decaf. cappuccino, latte, and that is it. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> We're going to be in every state in two years. We're going to open 400 stores in Sydney alone. <laughs> uh, we're going to be six times as big as Starbucks globally in three years' time. 
So just take wait. it as you want. So yeah, invest, yeah. please. Five million dollars <laughs> minimum entry. I refuse to talk to you unless you're in the five million dollar category. Anything less than go on like uh go on like the Dragon's Den or Shark Tank or whatever it's called and be like, for one percent of my company, five million dollars investment. <laughs> We're gonna be bigger than Starbucks and McDonald's combined. What do you sell? Water. <laughs> People already sell that. It's fine. So yeah, but yeah, it's going to be water. Yeah. <laughs> filtered water through, filtered through a cat's anus. <laughs> I mean, that's actually a better idea than. <laughs> I, I don't think, I don't think I would ever support a non-alcoholic alcohol business or non-alcoholic drink business um, financially. I don't think that's a smart move, but there, I could be proven wrong be proven wrong yeah, but this woman is gonna once she restructures and gets the right partner you're gonna be proven wrong i'm open to that honestly i hope she succeeds um i feel like there's an awful lot of working in a brothel coming her direction <laughs> so, uh she's got to be doing a lot of sucking that's all i'm saying before she seeds well that anyway. would be a good uh, like side business it's like <laughs> <laughs> we specialize in non-alcoholic beer and a brothel. And then there's like a, a special glory hole at the back. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. There you go. That is bring in the customers. Uh, giving away the free business advice again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you want to. You want to succeed in business. You need a glory hole. It's regardless of. Well documented. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> uh well okay finally what's the f- best reason to fire a staff member because uh, they came up with a stupid idea like selling non-alcoholic beverages <laughs> yeah <laughs> the alcohol shop <laughs> um they refused to attend the mandatory glory hall sessions on a friday uh or finally they uh, don't wear speedos in the pool. Those are um, those are all good reasons. Yeah, I, I said last, but this is not even good enough. There's a there's a linked article in this that we're gonna have to read after. But um, so a guy got fired on his fourth day because. Uh, he was labeled as not having the spirit of hard work. And do you want to know what gave him that label? Um, did he fall asleep or something? Or, um, yeah, what kind of job was he doing? Uh, it doesn't actually... St- uh, mechanical parts company. Oh, okay. A, jo- a maintenance worker. Oh. And you're going to agree that this piece of scum lazy person needed to be um, fired. All right, tell me what he did. Uh, He received a notice from the top management requiring him to run five kilometers within 30 minutes. To run five kilometers in 30 minutes? Yeah. So (laughs) after passing multiple interviews, he was hired and started his probationary period. And on the fourth day... The management gave him a thing that he um, had to do that. And then colleagues also warned that this was no joke. And then if you didn't run the 5K in 30 minutes, you would definitely be fired. Uh Uh-huh. The man started the audit that day in a weather of 40 degrees Celsius. After running about 800 meters, he felt that he was about to suffer from heat stroke. So he decided to give up and return to work. And then the next day he was dismissed by the company when he went to work, saying that the man failed the long distance running assessment stipulated by the company and labeled him as not having the spirit of hard work. (laughs) Well, you know, the world record for running a 5K is about 12 minutes. So I think they were quite lenient um, at that. I think like giving him a whole extra 18 minutes is fine. Um, Yeah, he could have could have just 
gone for it a little bit more. So, well, yeah. the company did get fined um, for it because they didn't make it clear in the that it was part of the assessment process. So, they only got like an eight hundred dollar fine though. So that they didn't inform him he needed to pass the physical fitness test before hiring him. So it was <laughs> illegal to fire him. Which go. kind of implies that actually they could have done this if they just told him in advance he had to run five kilometers. Yeah, in. <laughs> yeah. if they would said, "Hey, you gotta, you gotta, we gotta know you can do five k in thirty minutes," and As if you break the world record, record, which is like twelve minutes, you get a bonus. So get your skates on. Also, I mean, it's a fairly decent run too. It's not like it's yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty decent run. It's not going to be easy. But there you go. It's, uh, 40 degree heat too. is. That's why one of the many reasons that people use Heelys, uh, as you <laughs> talked about. Yeah, uh, that's what it's what he deserves not turning up to work in Heelys at the end of the day. Yeah. OK, finally, the final story, which is linked in that, uh -huh. um, which has such a great title that we just kind of <laughs> um, traveling is an adventure that often exposes us to new experiences, cultures, and unfortunately, sometimes unexpected health risks. Um, in a peculiar case of the importance of caution, even in seemingly innocuous situations, a man in China found himself grappling with an unlikely source of an infection. A hotel towel. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, a 30-year-old man got gonorrhea mm -hmm. from a hotel towel. Yeah, after he slept with the hooker, <laughs> he took a shower, and then he got gonorrhea from the towel. How disgraceful <laughs> is that? His eyes became red, watery, and painful, prompting him to suspect conjunctivitis. However, despite his efforts to alleviate this discomfort, uh, his condition worsened. Struggling to even open his eyes, he faced with an additional concern, pain during urination. Uh, he decided to seek medical help at a nearby hospital. Um, the initial diagnosis was start startling. Um, these were symptoms of gonorrhea um, in the eyes. Um, and then the case took a crucial uh, turn with a crucial detail. He would not engaged in any unsafe, explicit or obscene activities prior to the onset of symptoms. Sure. <laughs> not that he could let his wife know about anyway. <laughs> The oh, revelation you gonorrhea. Ah, oh, the towel in the hotel again. Damn it. It's gotta Every stop using those to hotel Thailand. towels. <laughs> Every time oh, I go no. to Thailand, I just get that eye gonorrhea. <laughs> certainly not from Ladyboy Bukakis. Yes, certainly not. Certainly not. Uh, the revelation puzzled the medical professionals, prompting them to delve deeper into the potential source. Um, after a careful review of his recent activities, he recollected a business trip he had taken about 10 days before his symptoms appeared. Seems suspiciously a fair while before, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. During his trip, he had used a hotel towel to wipe his eyes and lower body. Um, and then so... Expert it raised suspicions among experts that the hotel towel could have been the unsuspecting carrier of the infection. I mean, he's he's falsely accusing a hotel towel who is innocent, hasn't done anything like Until two weeks ago. after his visit to the hotel. Come on, bro. We all know what happened. You had like six or seven cheap hookers in your room. One of them wasn't as clean as you thought she was. Or when he got home, he engaged in certain activities. And I mean, you know, some sometimes you got to be careful. And he wasn't. I, I don't think it's fair to blame an innocent hotel towel. They, they it's done nothing wrong. So, yeah. 
<laughs> All of the hotel guests who were using towels that were washed in the same batch would have caught gonorrhea. If that was the <laughs> case. And the rest of them did not. So, Well, we don't know that. Well, this story just uh, implies one person got gonorrhea. So. Well, I mean, as much as you're going against it, I'll make sure to send you a link to this later so that you can keep it for <laughs> any time you need some explaining. Look, it happens all the time. Look at this. <laughs> <laughs> Here's five different articles where people have got STDs. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I got AIDS from a hotel towel. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Certainly the AIDS is from the hotel towel. Definitely not from Glory Hole <laughs> in France. No, definitely not. <laughs> Let's be realistic. That's not even not even possible. So there we go. I swear the guy at the glory hole insisted that he was clean. So it can't have been him. So we're yeah. going to have to look for another source. <laughs> it's definitely, it was definitely, you know what? I did use a towel in the hotel. <laughs> Thinking that might be the. <laughs> it was my towel that I brought from home, but still. Uh, yeah. I use the towel on the plane. You know, those face towels they sometimes give you. So I was at the brothel just for an <laughs> afternoon of fun. And I used the towel <laughs> so, just to wipe myself down. Guess what happened? Bad news. <laughs> In other news, um, uh, Dusty is pregnant. <laughs> we, think, we think it might be mine. I don't know. <laughs> Yes, there's been an outbreak of gonorrhea at the local glory hole at the same time that I got it, but I insist that it was from the towel. The towel. <laughs> this article <laughs> scientifically proves that is possible. <laughs> I know I didn't leave town and therefore didn't have a reason to stay in the hotel, but I got a good <laughs> offer and I thought, you know, I have to check this hotel out. <laughs> I've never stayed in a hotel in my hometown before. I thought it would be a fun, excitement, exciting time. <laughs> On yeah. a Tuesday. Yeah. When I was working. So, you know, it's just, why not? <laughs> they wouldn't, like, they fired me because I didn't run 4K, 5K at work fast enough. So I just went to the hotel to relax, use the towel. <laughs> So, how are you supposed to run 5k in 30 minutes when you got gonorrhea in the eye? <laughs> <laughs> that should be his excuse. Yeah, like, and goodness. you drank 12 beers. Yeah, well, nine. We don't nine. know what happened the other day. So. <laughs> nine, and you butt chugged three. <laughs> <laughs> Makes it difficult to run 5k when you do that. It does. So, I'm trying to get out at both ends, and you just. Can't keep it in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So there you go. It's all madness. These people. So, <laughs> oh, well, you know, that's a fun story to end it on for this week. I'm glad we proof. Glad we proved the existence. we're saving marriages out here because absolutely. I mean, we people do need week. to know. Do. Yeah, it's, a, it's good people. Uh, people need to, uh, yeah, be aware of what what happens with hotel towels and. So yeah, if you're gonna cheat with someone who may have some stuff and you're worried about it, make sure you come up with a reason why you needed to stay in a hotel. Do it in a hotel that has towels. There you go. <laughs> and then bring your own towel or buy one so you can throw away just to be safe. Yes, indeed. And hopefully <laughs> avoid it. But if you do get it. Then blame the towel. Absolutely. Still only the like third worst story we've heard about a hotel on this podcast. But then <laughs> there's been some weird st weird shit happened. So you know it's fine. Uh <laughs> all right. Well, good stuff, man. Oh yeah, I've got um a couple six packs to buy and a truck to drive, so <laughs> <laughs> 
I'm sure, you know, that's that's just regular Sunday for me. So <laughs> go and do that now. Uh, but yeah, have a good one, man. Thanks for yeah. thanks for the mental scars once again. So 